Look, it's lovely to see you. It's been about five and a half years, I think, since you were last on the show. Time, yes. Time flies by. You've had quite the time. I mean, we both had quite the time of it yeah. uh, in lockdown. And both of us have probably managed to make a show out of our lockdown experiences. Thank, thank um, God for <laughs> adversity. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But you've had a pretty, I mean, yeah. pretty tough. Well, but... I think what happened with me in lockdown is... Um, well, you know this, a lot of comedians, as soon as lockdown happened and the pandemic sort of, you know, took all of our work away, or the majority of our work away, there were some horrific Zoom gigs that happened. But um, um, I think a lot of comedians went into free fall panic as to how they were going to get their content out there, how they were going to stay vital. And, you know, uh, you know, people still need to see me. And I went completely the other way and just sort of reacted in an extremely human way to the pandemic and thought... I'm probably never going to live... Well, fingers crossed, I'm probably never going to live through something like this again. I'm going to really roll with it. So I went full sort of Hunter S. Thompson. I mean, I... Oh, 11 o'clock, rum's in the garden, hello. Um, but, I, uh, but I also, during that period, experienced what I can now describe as a massive midlife crisis and sort of borderline mini breakdown. It was... Yes. Uh, yeah, only because I had the time for it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Prior to that, I'd just been too busy. Yeah. You just crack on, don't you? Yeah, yeah, it's and it's true. only when you stop that you go, fuck, bits of this are really shit. Yeah, bits of this are really not working for me. So, um, yes, it was, it, was a, it was a stressful time. And then was, as a result of the stress, uh, my hair fell out. Uh, I got alopecia. Uh, I lost most of it. Uh, it's it's sort of coming back. Good. Well, yeah. I'm, like, my, I lost a ball and it's not coming no, back. No, yeah, yours isn't going to grow back, <laughs> is it? Yours is. I was thinking actually, my hair looks a bit like yours at the moment. Oh, does it? Does it? Yeah. <laughs> I'll, show, I'll show you. I haven't. Oh, okay. This is the first time I've taken my hat off on oh, stage. Amazing. For uh, a very long time, and I'm, I'm very aware of the irony of exposing <laughs> myself on a podcast. <laughs> uh, so just imagine a slightly less her suit. Richard Herring. Yeah. We, we've got similarities going it on here, haven't we? Similar, yeah, it's yeah. Similar, yeah. I've got this little bit here in the middle that's refusing to grow. Absolute bastard. Look, I've got two bits on the side that have decided, right, we're going to go for it again. And then just a <laughs> bit in the middle, right in the middle of my forehead that's gone, nah. Yeah. I like being shiny. <laughs> I like being shiny. <laughs> So, yeah, I rub it every day like a sort of genie lamp and hope it'll come back at some point. Yeah, Not I'm... too soon, though, because I'm on tour and my tour's about <laughs> being bald. <laughs> I know the irony, you know. <laughs> you get a game show and your hair falls out and you think, oh, that's not good timing. And then you write a show about going bald and it grows back and you go, can we please just <laughs> sync up diaries on this shit? Because it's not helping. <laughs> I mean, it's, yeah. you know, as, as a comedian, I, you know, and as I know myself, you go through some adversity and there's a part of you eventually, maybe not straight away, but there's a part of you thinking, oh, well, hold on, this isn't oh, yeah. the worst thing. So what was, yeah. what, how long did it take you to, 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 was it, for me, it was pretty immediate. I thought this was it? materially it, yeah. But did it take you a while to think this? Because it's, I mean, I, in a, I mean, I think to lose your hair... Mm. I mean, I was going to say for a woman, but I think it's also true for a man. It's, it's totally true um, for men as well. It's totally true for uh, men. I completely empathise with guys that lose their hair as yeah. well. Yeah, yeah. It's. I mean, it's a big. It's a really big thing. It's a really big thing, yeah. and particularly when you're on stage, you know, yeah. and you, you you are exposed as a. That's what you do. F f you know, f f for your career, you you present yourself in front of people. And uh, I was in denial about it for ages. <laughs> it really was. <laughs> I don't think anybody can do it. And it's like strands, you know. And then I had to hit that point where I'm going to have to deal with this. I'm either going to have to stop doing what I'm doing because I'm not happy and I don't feel... I don't feel... I don't feel uh, comfortable. Yeah. Or I bite the bullet and do that thing that, thank God, we as comedians are able to do, yeah. and start talking about it and laughing about it, and go out, Zoe, and get a wig so you can get yourself back on telly. So that's what I did, yeah. yeah. And um, and then the... the <laughs> so I got a wig, and it's a bit... It's weird, weird wearing a wig for the first time. You just think everybody knows you're wearing a wig. Like, you, you imagine everybody's eyes are just going to the top of your head, you know, at the concert, <laughs> and you just immediately want to blurt out, it's a wig, it's a wig! It's a wig, and the, nobody noticed it because it's a really good wig. But... Um, the first three telly jobs I got after getting my wig were all outside <laughs> in high wind conditions. <laughs> and I was like, I'm going to have to get a chin strap for this as well. <laughs> I'm going to have to gaffer it on. Yeah. So, yeah. 
Yeah, so. it's tough, but it's sort of, you know, I, I saw you interviewed about this and it's, it's a similar thing to me. And, you know, I decided to, I did discuss with my wife, well, I was going to discuss whether I've, whether I've had cancer or not and keep it to myself. But by, by talking, I decided, you know, I sort of had to talk about it. Mm. But, but by talking about it, it was very helpful, I think, for other people, but mainly, mainly for, yourself. for myself. Totally, <laughs> yeah, so. totally. I mean, I've met so many amazing people uh, having started talking about it on stage and I've had, you know, so many people get in touch with me and I've made lovely connections. But selfishly, it was, it initially, it was, it was me I was helping. It was, yeah. it was very cathartic and it was, it was, it was, it took the sting out of it. Yeah. It really took the sting out of it, yeah. But it took me a while before I thought I was able to talk about stuff. I was like, because lots of stuff happened in that, in those sort of two years. Like my wife and I separated. I ended up living on my own for a while in what I now lovingly refer to as my divorce daddy flat. And, uh, <laughs> just me, a chair, and a can of Heineken. <laughs> and, um, uh, uh, yeah, went through an awful lot. And we had yeah. therapy for the first time in my life. That's a good thing. Right, okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's I, good to talk. Oh, yeah. I was, um, I sort of enjoyed, I looked forward to it, because it was a time when we didn't have any gigs. Yeah. So, <laughs> 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 I would write stuff down during the week that I knew I was going to say to my therapist. I was like, that'll make her laugh. That'll, <laughs> this will, oh, she'll crack up at this, hang on. I'll make that sound like I'm coming from a very vulnerable position and then whack it back with a punchline at the end. She'll love that. <laughs> And when we finally, when we when we finally sort of finished our, you know, our, our sessions, and I was rewilded, so to speak, um, her last words to me were, "Well, Zoe, it's certainly never been dull." <laughs> <laughs> and I, I was like, "I've won therapy." I was, yeah. But it's also great for you to be talking. I mean, you know, again, I think like a midlife crisis is so associated with well, that kind of midlife crisis yeah. is so associated with men. Yeah. Bikes, yeah. you know, you bought sport, a sports car. I bought, I bought, I bought a sports car. Um, yeah, I think when we think of it, because there's a lot said now about women in their middle age, and thank God we talk a lot more about yeah. the menopause and, you know, yeah. the, the, the changes that women go through and, and the, the, the struggles that we have. But in, the, in but in the same way, there is a slightly cliched approach to, to female midlife where we sort of go, mm, she's a bit she's a bit weepy and a bit clammy and, you know... She's put on a bit of weight, but she's trying to sleep for you. Whereas blokes can go off, they go fuck something 25 years younger, buy a car, <laughs> sit in the shed, you know, do all of those things. And I sort of went that way. I mean, <laughs> you know, uh, did sit in the shed for a bit. Um, so, yeah, I sort of went that way. Um, it's quite empowering to go crazy in that direction. and, and Yeah, I think you know. so. Yeah, the sports car was a... I mean, that was... <laughs> I mean, it's silly now, isn't it? When you th I bought two, Richard. <laughs> I bought two because I bought one, and I, and then I eventually sort of came to my senses and went, this isn't going to make you happy, so is it? And I was like, no, it's not. Why isn't it going to make you happy, so? And I went, because it's not the right sports car. So, <laughs> I, so I sold it and bought another one. And, yeah, yeah, and just during, <laughs> during those times when there was no work, just drove around with the roof down and my wispy bits of hair <laughs> flapping about. <laughs> Classic, classic midlife <laughs> crisis. Yeah, and uh, yeah, and and you oh, you are back with your. Wife we are. Now, we so we you... spent a year apart. Right. We spent a year apart, which I think is that's a significant block of time to spend apart. Yeah. We've been together for twenty five years, so to spend a year apart is really significant. And what is so the the, the what is so um, lovely for me coming out of the back of this is to to learn that actually. After, you can actually find a new relationship within within that partnership that you've had for yeah. so so long. We have a much better understanding of each other. We had to be apart to sort of find out who we were, to come back and be better a better couple. Yeah. And um, and I'm yes, I see it sort of as a gift now. It was very tough. It was a really hard couple of years. It was really uh, it was I was very depressed and it was very tricky. But I'm. So grateful for all of the things that I've learned off the back of it, and yeah. the, and, the, and the new life that I have, and of course the material for a show. <laughs> Thank God for hard times for comedians, because yes, and then eventually you go, oh, I reckon I can make this funny. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, you know, you, you, everything is potentially funny, right? Yeah. You know, even things. I mean, I think the, both the things we've been through are. But people will say, well, you can't joke about cancer and you can't joke about female hair loss. Yeah. But of course you can, you know, because it's not j laughing at the 
at no. the condition. It's about laughing at the, what happens what around happened them. To it and your situation with it. And, yeah. you know, yeah, exactly yeah. that. And it, um, yeah. Yeah, well, it's great. So the tour is, is ongoing at the moment. It's called Bald Ambition. Uh, yeah. It's all over the... You're doing 40 or so dates? So I am doing 40 or so dates. dates. It's a lot, a lot of, of dates. Of, I've been in a lot of service stations. <laughs>